What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and today we're here with Coliseum, Dogstorm, Inuarashi, however you want to say it. Dogstorm is easy to say. Either way, uh, for Coliseum Dogstorm, this is the actually the second variation of his Coliseum. The original variation of, of Dogstorm was really bad. He was a side character, pretty unusable. However, this guy, on the other hand, is insane. He's a very, very good free-to-play unit. I would highly suggest farming this guy up. I, I mean, basically any new Colosseum that comes out, you guys should be farming up because the character is very, very good. So in this video, I am going to go through rounds one and two, as well as I've got four teams against round three against actual dog storm so before we get into that let's actually talk about the brand new character that you guys will be able to farm for which is going to be coliseum dog storm who is a strength cerebral slasher captain effect is a 2.5 times attack to strength and sight and then if you're below 50 percent hp you get a multiplier tra uh, multiplier chain growth boost which is not really that great for a free-to-play captain However, his special is insane. So you need 15 skill ups. So he's going to go down to a 14 turn cooldown. He gets one more additional cooldown after you get all the orbs to max his limit break. So I believe it'll be a 13 turn max cooldown, which is very good for what he does. So it will go ahead and reduce all enemies damage threshold by five turns. And it reduces five turns of chain coefficient reduction, which is insane. And then also reduces five turns of despair. Amazing utility. And then reduces one enemy's health by 10%. And you get a two times attack boost to strengthen Psy for one turn. This unit is so good. So this is, like, this is just furthermore stating why you should farm this character up. Amazing utility, small health cut, which doesn't matter too much, but then a two times attack boost to two separate colors. Man, this character is great. Uh, as for his crewmate abilities, he gets 100 additional attack if he's the last character to attack, which won't really be that often. And then he also completely evades paralysis as a sub, which isn't that useful in a lot of cases, but you know, it is what it is. He has the provoked attack boost, 120, and also critical hit, which is 80% chance for 8% extra damage. That's actually pretty good for a free-to-play unit. And then for a support effect, Kinemon, Kanjiro, Momo, and Raizo can get 9% of this character's attack added, which is actually pretty good as well. I think across the board, this unit is just a phenomenal character that you guys should be farming up. And not only is he good right now with a lot of good characters, but... Furthermore, looking forward to the super type meta with Snake Man and Sabo. This character is a great sub for those type of characters too. So definitely go ahead and farm this guy out. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the Colosseum Dogstorm. So getting into the video, first of all, we've got round number one, which is against... Neko? I'm pretty sure it's against Neko. Either way, uh, on round one, on battle four, you're going to have to deal with Pedro. He has 3.4 million, and his preemptive has five turns of bind only on your left side, and then two turns of rainbow shield is on the enemy side of the field as well. Now, I kind of screw up here. Uh, don't mind me. I use uh, my big mom after I use my, my Robin special. If you are using this team, make sure to use your big mom first, and then use Robin so that your uh, damage reducing effect from Robin does not get you know removed. So be careful about that. Because the thing is, is when you kill him, he does like around 30,000 damage to your team. Uh, if you have damage reducing effects, obviously it helps a lot. And you know, 30,000 with uh, relatively, you know, bare minimum damage reducing effects, you shouldn't have too many issues with uh, tanking that hit. And then on the next round, which is against uh, Cat Viper on Battle 5, he has a, an immunity buff and he has three turns of special bind on your top row and also on your left side. So you got to be very careful about where you place your characters there. And then also all your crew slots are changed into either G orbs or block orbs and for two turns he makes badly matching slots appear um less often or ma matching slots will appear less often basically is what it is uh, so that's round one very very straightforward especially with douglas bullet Round number two is against Shuten Maru, but first of all, you have to deal with Kinemon on stage four, and he has around 3.2 million, and his preemptive attack puts up a special limiter, so you can only use two specials for the rest of the run uh, per turn, so you've got to be very, very careful as to where you use your specials and what characters you actually bring, and also he burns you for three turns, and each perfect you hit is 6,000 damage, so be very careful about that. He does lots of bad things if he stays alive, so ideally kill him in that first turn, and once again, Douglas Bullet coming in clutch against uh, this particular round of the Colosseum. And then Battle 5 is against Shuten Maru, who has 4 million HP. And the really annoying thing about him is that he will give you a full board of badly matching slots. So again, with Douglas Bullet, helps out a lot. 
and then he will bind your top and middle row for six turns so with sockets it's only three turns and then when you kill him he actually fully revives and then also reduces your chain coefficient by five turns so that's why i bring Eneru, uh, Colosseum Eneru to help remove some of that as well as, uh, you know, just d absolutely destroying him with the specials that we have. So not really too much of a problem once again with Douglas Bullet. So now we're getting into round three of the Colosseum, the final battle against Dogstorm on the third stage, you have to deal with Neko Mamashi or Cat Viper. Uh, but the first team that you guys are seeing here is my V3 Law team. Uh, V3 Law, obviously my favorite legend in the game right now, and absolutely destroys it. And that's massive, massive props to the two Stampede legends in Stampede Luffy and Douglas Bullet. If you have both of those, well, specifically Douglas Bullet, if you have him, this Colosseum is super easy. So uh, just know that if you have him, you, you're most likely going to be using him in some way, shape, or form, either as a sub or as a captain. Stage four against Dogstorm is really annoying. He has a relatively high HP pool and there are those mobs characters as well. The mob characters will do really annoying things if you leave them alive or when they attack they do bad things. Um, and the thing here is is you can only use two specials per turn on this stage and the thing here is, is you cannot change your orbs and you cannot use a following turn buff while Inuarashi is on the field or Dogstorm's on the field. Um, once you kill Dogstorm, you can then use a following turn buff. And what I mean by a following turn buff is like Legend Lucy, for example. You know how like if you hit a certain amount of perfects, you get a buff in the following turn. It, he activates his interrupt if you use one of those type of specials or if you use an orb changing special. So he's very, very, very particular as in where he activates his interrupt. So you gotta be very careful as to what, you know, specials you're bringing here so in this example here i wouldn't be able to use law special because he would go ahead and remove my orb boost that law would typically provide now the final boss stage against dogstorm and shuten maru so there are two massive hp bosses on this stage and it is relatively intimidating because the other thing that you got to keep in mind is that if you bring any dex quick or int characters into stage five they will get special binded for 10 turns so if you have shanks crew as your captain that could be okay because he can remove the special bind so that's one thing that you might want to think about uh particularly bringing shanks crew as your captain or friend captain if you want to do that but dogstorm has 20 million and then shuten mara has 13 million and they give you attack down as well and they remove your accumulated values and beneficial effects so you can't bring any effects into this final boss stage which is pretty annoying and then uh both of the enemies are actually decks uh Inuata, she starts off as, as strength and he turns into dex and you need to kill both of them in the same turn otherwise they will revive each other which is why douglas bullet is considered to be one of the best characters for this particular coliseum fight The next team in the video is Mihawk and Perona, the brand newly released Sugo Fest exclusive on One Piece Treasure Cruise Global. Of course, I had to use them for the Colosseum that debuts alongside them, uh, and of course, they they get through it relatively easily. Now, as for the other characters on this team, we have we have V1 Law, and he's really good because we can use him in tandem with Stampede Luffy on stage four against the Dogstorm and the Musketeer mob characters to allow Stampede Luffy's uh, damage to bypass the barriers of the enemies and, and do lots of damage to them. Plus, when you activate Law Special to enable the abilities to go through barriers, he also does a lot of damage to one of them. I think it actually KOs one of them. Yeah, it, it does. It does KO them, and then, you know, you do lots of damage against the other two mobs. Plus, with Stampede Luffy Special, he gets an enhanced attack and orb boosting buff he has a stat boost as well he just hits very very hard once you launch that special um so even though you know the enemy has a rainbow shield it's not that big of a deal because stampede luffy will just hit ridiculously hard and then on the final boss stage we have the ability to use the uh special ability of mihawk and perona to get the guaranteed two times conditional boost we've got raid jinbei as well for the uh for the color affinity for our strength characters and then we've also got don krieg and Gein allowing us to get an orb boost they can be replaced by any orb booster at all 
Uh, they're just kind of there just because they're an orb booster. They could just be replaced with whatever you want, really. But either way, this team works exceptionally well. And this is likely going to be my farming team for this event just because it gets through it very quickly. Everyone pretty much starts out nearly max special. So there's no stalling that needs to be uh, that needs to happen here, which is good. So yeah, this will probably be my farming team. But anyways, I'll leave you guys with the rest of this clip and then we'll move on to the next team once it concludes. The next team in the video is going to be Douglas Bullet. As I mentioned, Douglas Bullet is one of the best characters for this particular Colosseum. Now, you might see that I have Mihawk and Perona as a sub on this team. Don't fret. The only reason why they're here is because they change block orbs into matching. And plus, you know, they have stat boost for this particular Colosseum. That's the only reason why they're here. Mihawk and Perona can be replaced by any unit that changes block orbs into matching. So... Do not worry about that. Uh, we also have the brand new Kizuna Moria on this team. He's really good because we can get an orb boost on this stage against Cat, Cat Viper. And then when we move on to stage four, the ability that he provides will enable us to get another orb boost to our strength characters. And then of course, using that combination of V1 Law to allow our specials to bypass barriers and Douglas Bullet once again. So by having an orb boost, we have Douglas Bullet special. We just completely wipe the floor with stage four Dog Storm. And then on stage five, we do have the support effect of of version 1 Akainu on our team to enable our strength characters to get strength slots and it will also go ahead and give our strength characters a 1.5 times attack boost because you can't use an attack boost on the final boss stage that's a huge downside that is within the within this Colosseum that will kind of hurt a lot of teams in being able to beat this Colosseum so having a support effect as powerful as uh, as Akainu to enable you to get a support effect 1.5 attack boost, which isn't a big attack boost, but you know, it's gonna be more than enough, especially when you stack it on top of all the other boosts that you're likely to have on your team, right? So yeah, Douglas Bullet once again coming in clutch with essentially a full strength team that is able to take down Colosseum Dogstorm. And then the final team in this video is going to be Stampy. Luffy is the friend captain this time. And once again, Douglas Bullard is a sub. He's just way too good. And as for the other subs on this team, we've got Stampede Raid Sabo, who enables us to remove attack down, which is what gets procced on stage five. And he also gives our strength characters a 1.75 color affinity, which is very good. Then as well on this team, we've got Shanks Crew to enable us to get a health cut and a chain lock. Um, he could probably replace by another unit that's a really heavy chain locker or a really heavy uh, HP cutter, but I would probably suggest bringing uh, a really good chain locker. That's what I would suggest anyway. And then also we've got Don Krieg and Gin for a two times orb boost for the final boss stage. Again, can be replaced by any orb booster that you want. And then once again, we've got the uh, the Douglas Bullet. And I, I believe on this team, we also had the Akainu support on the Douglas Bullet as well to enable us to get the 1.5 attack boost. Well, then again, it's just enabling us to get some matching slots. But, you know, you can use the switch ability of Shanks Crew to give you the same attack boost. And it's to all characters. So, yeah, using Shanks Crew is highly advised. But I suppose if you don't have Shanks Crew then you could probably just chuck in another really high uh, chain locker. That's what I would suggest uh, at the end of the day. But either way, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video today, breaking down the latest Colosseum. And if you guys did enjoy it, make sure you go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post on my channel, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I will see you guys within the next video.